We're just outside our nation's capital as we get set for the NWSL Game of the Week, the Pride Visit the Spirit. We are starting our pregame show in just a few seconds. We're here at Maureen Hendricks Field getting set for the NWSL Game of the Week. The Pride visiting the Washington Spirit. Hawker is here. He's ready for his first ever soccer game. Hawker's pumped. His family's pumped. Great to have you guys all here. We're happy to be here for you again. The NWSL pregame show. The second time we're going to have a night game. NWSL on ESPN presented by Lifetime. Yes, it's a mouthful, but you will enjoy it. In about 20 minutes, we'll kick off. We've got a huge game coming up. The Pride, a team right now tied for second in the league. The Spirit, a team trying to get going, but because of such a log jam, three points will go a long way for their season. We'll get you all the storylines cut up across the league. Obviously, a big week. The Kristen Press trade, Morgan Bryan coming back in the league. Kate Margraff will join me to talk about all of that, break down the game. But before we get there, let's get you the lineups, get Jen Hildreth to check them out. And Jen, we'll call her uh, Jen Cool, I believe, in her glasses right now. Gives you the lineups. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a surprise for later, Dallin. I'm going to break out Jen Cool in a little bit as I welcome you guys into our booth and what Dallin likes to call the ivory tower. Not so much up here, but hey, it's not so bad all. So we're, we're getting things ready for the game. And in this one, it is a second meeting of the season between these two teams. Washington winning the first one, but that was early in the season. You're going to see a lot of changes, though, to the lineups from that game to this one. And I'm sorry, Washington Spirit fans. I don't have much of an update for you on Mallory Pugh other than to tell you she's still rehabbing, not here with the team. So this is the lineup as it stands. Unfortunately, you also notice no Rose Lavelle. Now, she is available, Jim Gabera told us, but they're being cautious as she did have some pain in that hamstring after the last game. Joanna Lohman also getting into the starting lineup again today as Stefania Benini a late scratch due to some hamstring tightness, although she also would be available if needed. Aubrey Bledsoe in goal facing her former team, the Orlando Pride, a team that has really started scoring some goals. It's what we all expected with this potent lineup that they have. Alex Morgan right at the top up there. Sydney LaRue, how good has she been? Two braces on the season, four goals the last three games, and four goals also for Shioma Abogagu. Marta starting this match on the bench, but she will be available for Tom Sermani's side, and what a difference she made coming off the bench in their last game, a 3-2 win against Sky Blue FC. So that's your little sneak peek at the lineups for this matchup. We're going to go ahead and get you back down to Dallin and Kate, get their thoughts. Specifically, guys, maybe we start with no Rose Lavelle and the impact that that will have on the Washington spirit. Yeah, unfortunate for Rose. Uh, hamstring has been a problem for her for over the last year. She's tweaked it a little bit. She's on the 18. We'll see if she can feature it all in the second half of this game, talking to her before the game. She was frustrated at first, but relieved that it's not a serious injury. How much has uh, her absence hurt this team? Well, it hurts the team because you're missing that creative spark that with no space whatsoever, clobbered by three defenders, she's able to spin her way out of it and now pass that ball into where those defenders were, creating that space and creating opportunities for fellow players. But more importantly for Rose Lavelle, can she figure out a way, I think as well, to get over the stuff in between her ears, mm -hmm. right? It is so hard coming back from a hamstring because as a former player, you need that in every part of running. It takes the most load out of every muscle part, out of every muscle on your body. So you have to get over that fact that a little bit of a stretch might just be scar tissue, but it's smart to be safe than sorry, right? But again, I think that's one of those last hurdles she's going to have to overcome before we see her on a regular basis every single week. That's the way we're all excited for. When she's fully healthy mm -hmm. and can play week in and week out, the difference she can make for this team in this league and for the women's national team, it really, the sky's the limit for her, a player that talented. So uh, one other thing before we get to some highlights, obviously there was a game last night. There was a game earlier today, a big one between North Carolina and Seattle. We'll get there in one sec. Uh, key for this game, we talked about Rose, but in terms of finding a way to slow down Orlando, who scored a lot, but Washington struggling to score themselves, how do you see this game shaking out? What are the, some of the keys in your mind? Well, the keys for Washington is make sure that speedy front three of Orlando doesn't get in behind. And then Andy Sullivan needs to join the attack. Can it be a collective attack and not just a one and two transition speed of Ordega and Hatch up top? And for Orlando, it's all about that midfield. They can dominate this game because they have international players from back to front, yeah. every single line. Can that midfield control the tempo? Can they control that pace? Can they dictate when they want to go forward? And if they can do that, that Orlando team, I think won't just be third in the standings. I think they could 
I think they might be able to catch up. Yeah, they, they started slow. They lost the Aussies weren't in town. Obviously, they were qualifying for the Women's World Cup. The Brazilians were doing the same. So they Priorities. got their whole complement back. <laughs> They're ready to roll. And, of course, Marta is always Marta. So, all right, let's show you the highlights from what took place earlier this week at NWSL. We start Friday night. Portland on the road in Houston in the ninth minute. Tobit Heath, she's battled injuries. She missed uh, most of the game two weeks ago, but she features here, scores a goal nine minutes in, assisted by Christine Sinclair, who's been absolutely ridiculous so far this season. But then at 12th minute mark, Sofia Huerta just joins the team for Houston, traded from Chicago. We will talk about that. She tallies the first time for the dash, ties it up at one. But back came Portland the other way. Anna Maria Sertogortovic. God, I love that name. She's able to put it away the second time off of Jan Jane Campbell, gets the header to go. The Swiss International lights the lamp. Use some hockey term. The Capitals did win the World Cup, the uh, Stanley Cup here. And then Christine Sinclair gets on the ball. Jane Campbell wants that one back, went through her hands. But Sinclair leads the league in goals and now tied for assists. The Canadians having a phenomenal campaign. They win 3 1. North Carolina on the road in Seattle. Seattle second in the standings. North Carolina first. Seattle gets on the board first. Megan Oyster heads it in, puts it on at 1 0. They're elated up in the Pacific Northwest. And eh, things went south after that. Jaylene Hinkle, beautiful cross. Lynn Williams delivers on the other side in the 27th minute. Then Crystal Dunn, the U.S. International, she'll get in the mix. And at this point, Kate, the route was kind of on. Yeah, for Seattle, you hope that they didn't mail it in and say, okay, we're all done, but they didn't. The quality of North Carolina, they're, all the players are in the right system. Paul Riley set up a system just for them, and they just totally dominated Seattle this entire game. And Merritt Mathias will find the back of the net, as I said, to start a point. A great move, skipping past defenders, lighting it up, getting a little fortunate there as well. 3-1, they go up there, and then Crystal Dunn, does it again in the 70th minute. She finds the back of the net, and this kind of breaks Seattle's back a little bit. Their, their team coming in, you've got the, 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 the team that's top of the table are now coming into your building, and they just got, they got trounced. There's no other way to say it. A tough loss for them, 4-1. Chicago and Utah, that's interesting because, of course, Kristen Press, the trade we all talked about, she came back in the league. She goes to play at Utah, playing her former team, Chicago. And, of course, you can see that game on Go90, the app, go90.com. At 8 Eastern, that game kicks off. Let's show you the standings now as we stand right now. North Carolina is top, and then second, Seattle, Orlando, Portland, all in a log jam there with 19 points. Orlando obviously can get sole possession of second place as they play here shortly, and we'll see if they get that done. Before we get there, though, let's chat with uh, you guys. You sent in some questions, submitted them again through Twitter. Ooh. We appreciate that. This what is Kate's choose? favorite what do we choose? part of the show. We'll start with Sofia, Sofia Huerta, uh, again, all-name team in the league. For some reason, I struggle to say that the first time every time. Huerta. Huerta. I, my pronunciation's terrible. All right, here's the question coming in from at Rio <laughs> underscore Rico TX. Now the million-dollar question is whether Sofia Huerta plays as a defensive or defender or midfielder for the Houston Dash. This is obviously an issue because for the U.S. Women's National Team and Jill Ellis, you know this well, she wants her to play right back. Mm -hmm. Huerta wants to be on that national team, wants to be in the qualifying team in October, wants to be in the World Cup team next year in France. That's her best route to that team. But how does she fit in Houston with Vera Powell? We saw her in the midfield. She scored already. Right. Sophia Huerta asked for the trade, which I thought was interesting because she wanted to find a place where she could get consistent minutes at that right back spot. She goes to Houston. And we're all thinking, okay, that's where she's going to play. And all of a sudden we see her in the number 10 role. Vera Paul doesn't have to do what Sophia yeah. Huerta wants to do. And nor does Vera Paul have to do what Jill Ellis wants her to do. What's important for Huerta, though, is 90 consecutive minutes because you cannot ever replicate a real game and being game fit. And not only that, learning how to connect with others. So although she's not playing with a ton of space in front of her that you get it right back and having to make those game time decisions on which ball you play, she is learning how to turn under pressure and, again, working in tight spaces. Yeah, really unfortunate situation. I mean, a, 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 just a difficult situation. You know the player wants to play at a certain spot for one team, but club comes first, really, a lot of times because that's who's making the decisions week in and week out. We'll see if she still can work her way on a Jill Ellis' roster consistently as we go out for the rest of these friendlies they have coming up and then the qualifying tournament coming up in October. Now, the news of the week also, Huerta was part of it, but Kristen Press coming back into the league, part of a three-way, three-team trade between U Houston, Chicago, and Utah. So Press goes over to Utah now. Morgan Bryan comes back into the league. She went to Lyon last offseason, last season, I should say, played in Lyon. Struggled to really get any traction there, to really play for, for the French champions, one of the most dominant teams in European women's football. But now she comes back here to Chicago. Well, let's ask one question at a time. We'll stick with our Twitter question first, which is press-related. Utah Royals FC have acquired a true playmaker in hopes of adding speed and goal scoring. Will press be the key ingredient to Utah's success? Sent in by at KT Glenn. Katie Glenn, appreciate it. 
Your thoughts? Well, Katie, I think it's going to be important to know where she plays. If she plays that number nine role, she will use that speed to sit on the back shoulders of defenders and get in those gaps and be the goal scorer. But I think she prefers being in that number 10 role. And mm -hmm. I think that's where I envision where she'll be. She'll be that linking player in the midfield, knows how to play with Becky Sauerbrunn from their days on the national team on that back line. So she can link the back to the front and then go herself or dish it off to somebody else. So an incredible pickup for Utah. And I think this is going to help them try to make a playoff push. Yeah, Laura Harvey's been playing a 4-2-3-1 system for pretty much the whole most of the last few games here and press would theoretically slot in really well underneath Amy Rodriguez there getting her in the mix there they've been really good on defense you mentioned Becky Sauerbrunn the U.S. national team captain anchors that D Katrina Gorey's been really good as an attacking midfielder is this a team that you could see possibly moving up enough to host a playoff game? Because right now, I mean, it seems like North Carolina is going to – we're going to Carolina for a playoff game. <laughs> the question is, where else are we going? Do you think Utah could be that destination? Yeah, but I, th I think a lot of teams could be that destination. Yeah. I mean, that is such a logjam. There's so much parity in this league. As, and as fans, that's what we love to see. So only the cream really, really, really will rise to the top, like the Tony Cruz moment from today. Who's going to take it on their back and be able to elevate this team? And I think Utah, with Kristen Press in that lineup, gives them a fighting chance. It'll be interesting to see that race down the down the uh, stretch here but we still got a long way to go and a lot of opportunities here Orlando's got a big one here today they can get sole possession of second place if they win that game let's go back up to Jen Hildreth now in the booth with who's got more uh, with her, her her Jen cool glasses <laughs> Jen I'm sorry I thought you were wearing them before no. I, I I think I just messed up but, you I, know, no, they look great I just had to make you wait for this little gem anybody remember these I think this was the NWSL championship maybe a couple of years ago but anyway <laughs> I can see nothing with them on so let's lose those because we want to tell you guys about the ESPYs you get a chance to vote for some NWSL sell players in three different categories. The ESPYs coming up July 18th, 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. You have Female Athlete of the Year, Julie Ertz, U.S. Soccer, 2017 Player of the Year nominated in that category. International Women's Soccer Player, Sam Kerr, Jody Taylor, both in the mix there. And for NWSL Player, you see the list there. A.D. French, obviously NWSL Goalkeeper of the Year a year ago, Sam Mewis, from the North Carolina Courage last year. Rapino had a great season she had with 12 goals. But I have to ask you, my friends, as we see Sam Kerr, the last one in that category. I mean, really, is there really anyone who should win that award other than Sam Kerr? Come on. No, Sam Kerr, every day of the week, every <laughs> moment, every minute. She dominated the league last year and carried a team that was totally struggling. Now player in the world? No. Sam Kerr didn't play in a Euro. She didn't play in the European Championship. So I would give it to Like Martins, who did win the FIFA Ballon d'Or. Yeah. She was fantastic. That was a great tournament and Denmark made a great run, but in the end, Holland and Mertens were absolutely fantastic. We're taking a little brief pause here at Maureen Hendricks Field. Back kickoff will be on ESPN News at the top of the hour, 7 o'clock. We'll be back here with more of the pregame show in a minute. All right, back here now the pregame show with Alex Morgan. And Alex, you're not just a global superstar, you're now a movie star. Alex and me came out a couple weeks ago. How did that come about? Give me the backstory and how you got into making and being part of a movie. I'm just so glad that it all came together and um, we made it happen. And, uh, you know, I think it came out great. Obviously, it, it came started with an idea from Eric Chipmell, the director and the writer of the film. And just approached me about it. I kind of thought he was crazy initially. And then I was like, you know what? This could be an amazing thing that we have going on here. So I was all in after that. Warner Brothers picked it up and Nickelodeon um, joined along. And uh, I think it's just been great so far. And I've gotten a great reception from the movie too. Now we know you've done a bunch of commercials, but this was your first acting in terms of uh, a movie? It was, yeah. I was actually in a good amount of scenes. Um, I had never done acting. Um, this extensive before, so I say I was a little rough around the edges, um, but because I've been playing soccer my entire life, but um, there's definitely a special pressure to penalties and obviously um, being expected to score, being expect being that one that should put pressure on my people on my shoulders, should put that pressure and take on that pressure. Um, it's It still has to be the penalties, I'd say. All right, let me ask you one question about the game real quick, though. Coming in here, how do you find a way to walk out of here with the results? And a tough place where you guys lost earlier in the season here. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, because obviously you can look at their roster and see that um, Washington has a few injuries, um, see that they're more on the bottom of the table. But that's just um, 
that's just us coming in there and trying to make excuses. And for us, we need to play good soccer. I feel like we've just been a little in inconsistent throughout the season. So for us, it's kind of getting that consistency throughout um, the players on the field, throughout just you know, feeding the players the right balls and um, giving each other the right positioning and just playing our role on the on the team at the best of our abilities and just being selfless out there on the field. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, now over to Kate, who's with Sydney LaRue. All right, Sydney, thank you so much for joining us. So Orlando Pride is sitting in third, but your coach says your performances as a team have been a bit up and down. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing to improve your consistency? Um, I think it's been tough. We've had like a lot of different lineups. We've had people in, people out, injuries. Um, so I think we're just finally like getting the group together and it seems to be working a little better now. Um, these past couple games have been good for us and so hopefully we can keep moving forward. Well, individually speaking, the past two games, you've been phenomenal. Two goals in the past two games makes you tied for with teammates for a leading goal scorer. What has helped you find the back of the net? Um, I think like just getting myself in scoring positions, I feel like I've been uh, like on the defensive side a lot more and I find myself, you know, getting in a little better positions to score. So and it's happening. So getting higher up the field yeah. must be a little bit easier when Marta's on the pitch. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what makes her so yeah. special and why does she make your job yeah. as an attacker easier? Um, I think that she brings in so many players and she's able to get out of these tight situations where there's like five players around, so it leaves all of us open. Um, and she just makes people better. You know, she makes her teammates better, she makes all of us better, and, and she's a joy to play with. All right, good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Uh, Aubrey Bledsoe was absolutely fantastic last week for the Washington Spirit, holding on to a point, being the NWSL Player of the Week. Her saves were phenomenal. Kate has more with the net miner from the Spirit. Aubrey, thank you so much for joining us. So you lead the league with saves, and you had two shutouts in the past two games. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling coming into today's game? Feeling pretty confident. Just want to keep rolling off those performances. Our defense has done tremendously these past two games, so hopefully now our offense can get going and we can get a win today. Now you're playing against Orlando, a team you're very familiar with. In fact, mm -hmm. you were with them last year. What's, what are some of the advantages playing against your old team? I'd say I, I know their identity and their attacking tendencies. It was a pleasure going up against Alex and Marta and all their great attacking talent every day. So I kind of know what to expect. Obviously, they're still incredible players, and it'll be tough to stop today, but um, looking forward to playing against them. OK, now this team isn't where you want it to be in terms of the standings. What are some of the steps you guys need to take collectively to get yourselves into playoff contention? We're just trying to look at it game by game. There's still uh, lots of hope to make the playoffs. Um, it's this league this year is, is really close, so we just need one win and we'll keep building from there. But I think we still can uh, get in the playoffs. All right, thank you. Thanks. She's absolutely right. A win would go a long way to getting them back into the standings. But Orlando, too, the chance to claim second place if they get a win here at Maureen Hendricks Field. That's it for the pregame show. Grab your remote, turn on ESPN News. We are live at the top of the hour. We'll see you there. Orlando Pride, live. Welcome to Maureen Hendricks Field at the Maryland Soccerplex in Boyds, Maryland. It is the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime. The Spirit hosting the Orlando Pride. And this Orlando attack, one of the best in the National Women's Soccer League, led by the leading scorer for the U.S. Women's National Team in 2018, Alex Morgan. And here as of late, Sydney LaRue, too, has been a scoring supernova. Four goals in the last three games for LaRue to combine with Morgan in that attack. Hi, everybody. So glad to have you with us. I'm Jen Hildreth, joined by Olympic and World Cup champion Kate Markgraf. And Kate, this Washington team may have struggled to score so far this season, but they've been really good on defense, shut out their last two opponents. 
How are they going to handle this Orlando attack? Well, you nailed it right in the first part, is how are they going to collectively attack? And that's something they've been working on. They are known as a transition team because they have the incredible speed of Hatch and Ordega up top. But can they now build collectively and get Andy Sullivan in the attack and rely on Bledsoe in the back to keep him nice and sound, which is going to be a pretty tough task against Alex Morgan and Sidney LaRue. And if that midfield, that Australian midfield, that was not here the last time these two teams faced each other, when Washington Spirit 1-2-0, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a totally different game. Can Van Eggman, can they hold on the ball? Can Kennedy help create? This will be an even more potent attack if they can build that chemistry. Well, certainly one of the players you always talk about in that attack is Alex Morgan. And no surprise that her impact, you can see it in the record, especially when she scores. Look at that, the last two seasons, the pride unbeaten when Alex Morgan puts it in the back of the net and she's standing by with Dallin Cuff. Thanks, Jen. Alex, you guys have been great on the road as of late. Three and two in your last five, no losses. How do you walk into this building right here and walk out with three points or at least one point? Yeah, I think we're feeling pretty good. Last time we came here, we didn't get the win. Um, we ha were missing quite a few players, and I wasn't here with the team either. So we're hoping just to build off of last game. Um, obviously, like just the last couple games, we've noticed that we haven't really had two wins in a row, and that's kind of been something that um, we want to continue to build off of good performances, and we just haven't quite done that. We've kind of been a little more inconsistent, so we want that consistency um, to come for us throughout the season. Um, we feel really good today, and so hopefully we can we can get the win because it is a perfect pitch, and we're looking forward to the game. Thanks, appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we return. Jen and Kate will take you to tonight's starting lineups. We have the opening kick. You're watching the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime. My heart's a racing. Let's go, Jets are bound. of the first purge. Our neighborhood is under siege. There's a lot of good people who we're going to have to protect. We're safe. And now. Stay strong. I'm coming. The first purge. Rated R. Get yourself a good seat as we welcome you back to the Maryland Soccerplex. And boy, it's Maryland. The Washington Spirit hosting the Orlando Pride, a team that has been very good on the road here as of late. Dropped their first two on the road unbeaten since that time. We'll see if that streak can continue. They did lose to this Washington Spirit team earlier in the season. And now let's take a look at this starting lineup for the Spirit. You see Rebecca Quinn moving back up into the midfield with Whitney Church back on that back line. Also important, Aubrey Bledsoe, the NWSL saves leader, is anchoring that back line along with veteran Estelle Johnson. It's going to be key communication for them on where to hold their line to make sure they don't give up too much space in the back which the Pacey Orlando can take advantage of. Watch number six, Andy Sullivan. They want her to join the attack a little bit more. And this is a team that's been playing in a 4-3-3, but they're going to a 4-4-2 with Joanna Lohman inserted for Benini, who will be sitting behind that front line. Lohman making her third start of the season for the Spirit. Just in time for her birthday as well. Now the starting lineup for this Orlando Pride team. No Marta in the starting 11, though she is available but you still have a ton of firepower up top. Alex Morgan, Chioma Obokugu, Sydney LaRue. And they have internationals in every single line of Selena Zadorsky, who is that anchor back there that's trying to get everyone on the same page, even though they don't speak the same language. <laughs> Alana Kennedy will sit and hold a little bit more, traditionally a center back. She's gotten used to playing in that holding six role, and they're looking for Alex Morgan, Sydney LaRue, and Obokugu up top. 2-0 was the score, the first meeting of these two teams in week two of the season. Here are the two goalkeepers. You see Ashlyn Harris packed in the middle of that huddle. U.S. national team goalkeeper. She will be in net for Orlando. And Aubrey Bledsoe, as you mentioned, the NWSL save leader and the NWSL player of the week. She's really been playing well for this team that has had a stingy defense shutting out their last two opponents. Not only that, the backup to Harris last year before she was traded knows this team very well and you know that always brings a little extra chip on the shoulder ashley hatch sydney larue a couple of those players to keep an eye on up top for their respective teams hatch coming over to this washington side after last season with the north carolina courage
Orlando coming in with 19 points. Puts them in a tie for second place. And Washington, while further down on the table, knows there's still plenty of time to make a move. They can start getting their pieces together. Still without Rose Lavelle, not in the starting 11, though potentially available if needed tonight. And Mallory Pugh still out as well. But we kick off, and the Orlando Pride will start out with the ball wearing white on top, purple on the bottom. And we'll quickly look to get it up to that front line. Preset Asco, that outside back position. So speedy for the spirit. Here's Andy Sullivan. They'll have to halt for a moment and ready for this free kick. Eric Tattersall, our referee this evening. And what a weapon Christine Naren has when she has an opportunity like this. Gets a look at one early in this one. NWSL's all-time assist leader sends it into the area. Kennedy up in the air for it. Those two have connected before for a goal this season off of a corner kick. And we were a little bit nervous coming into this one with the weather, but it has turned into a gorgeous evening here in Boyd's, Maryland. 76 degrees will take it. A little bit of wind, some clouds in the sky. I'm your much good luck nicer. Charm. You I are. Your, I am your good luck charm, basically. Yeah, I'm glad there's no five-hour no, lightning okay. delay this time. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we all endured last time we were here, and the Chicago Red Stars picked up a 2-0 win after that long delay. Hatch trying to connect with Freni Ordega, the Nigerian international that time. And Kate, is there anything you look for early from this Washington team in particular? As Jim Gabera told us this week, you know, it's no secret. They know they need to get better in the attack. What do they need to do to find some goals? I think it's all about spacing in the midfield when they're behind the ball, when they're defending, if they are to win it and they're going to go press. How close is Andy Sullivan and Hooster and Loman to that attacking line? Because otherwise, Ordega, you're never going to catch her if you're 20 yards behind her. But if you're in close connection, 10 or 15 yards, you have a chance to come and join the attack. So that spacing is critical, not only on the defensive end to handle your press, but then after you win it. Midfielders, certainly the ones to keep an eye on in that connection. Here is Didasco, former UCLA Bruin. Nothing doing on that attack, though. Mentioned that first meeting a couple of times between these two teams that came back in week two. It's hard to even really compare. A, it was so long ago, and then B, there were several key players not in the mix, especially for Orlando. Finds itself again on the attack here. LaRue over to Morgan. She's going to take a quick shot, force a save from Budso. Jim Gabert, longtime head coach in women's professional soccer, and his third year with this Washington Spirit team. He's had to deal with injuries and players in and out, as have most teams in the league to one extent or another. Here is Ordega. And we did learn that Estefania Benini, who was expected to be in the starting 11 for Washington, the Argentinian, unable to start tonight, just being cautious with some hamstring tightness. Dallin Cuff found that out for us before the match, talking to Jim Gabera. But players like Benini and like Ordega, who we just saw on the ball a few moments ago, some of those internationals that I think people here in Washington have just been waiting to get clicking consistently. Zubogugu, who's made quite a name for herself in this Orlando attack, despite all of those big names around her. She has four goals on the season, one of three Orlando players with four tallies. Along with Rachel Hill off the bench and Sydney LaRue. Monica 
Erica out to Poliana. Two Brazilians along that back line for Orlando. Look to get it up to Emily Van Eggman. Van Eggman in her first year with Orlando. And back in the NWSL for the first time since 2014. Last played with the Chicago Red Stars. Kennedy going low to try to head that ball in. Kennedy, another Australian for Tom Sermani's side. Kennedy tried to flick it behind her. This foul is going to go against the pride. Sermani, former head coach of the Australian and U.S. women's national team in his third year with this Orlando Pride team. Saw Orlando make it to the playoffs last season and certainly keeping themselves in a good position at the moment as I mentioned coming into this match tied for second place three-way tie 19 points Seattle Orlando and Portland after their win last night all with 19 all trailing North Carolina who got back to its winning ways earlier today 4-1 win at Seattle here is Carson Pickett looking for Ibogagu. Taylor Smith defending for Washington. Morgan back to the goal. Back out to Nairn. so punched it out and had to. And then Sullivan just clears it out of bounds. Bledsoe coming up big, and this is critical because Van Eggman had snuck inside and Hooster had lost her mark with that delayed run from center midfield. Alex Morgan, knowing she had players on her back, didn't have a chance to shoot on goal, smartly lays it back, and it creates an opportunity for the midfielder that put that extra effort to get into the box. Mentioned a couple of scores already for you, but just to catch you up, what's going on around the league? Got things started in Houston, that 3 1 win for the Thorns last night, and then North Carolina taking care of business against the rain. Uboga go off of Smith, that will earn a corner kick for the Pride. So perhaps another challenge here for Bledsoe with the sun in her eyes a little bit too. And Aaron lays this one on the ground to Van Eggman. She'll be the one to try to get it into the area. Had it blocked. Rebecca Quinn and Ordega. Can Washington keep some numbers with the speedy Ordega as she breaks out on her own? Hatch is up there with her. Ordega tried to get it over the hatch. You got the touch, but too high. And this is what we talk about. Their transition speed right off a corner kick. They're able to explode into space using the pace of Ordega up top. Draws two defenders to her. Just that last touch right there, it slowed her down. It wasn't aggressive enough. Made her hinge on her momentum just a little bit. She knows she doesn't want to strike with her left there. Trying to find her strike partner in Ashley Hatch, who's just leaning backwards a little bit. The timing was not on. Good hustle by Ubogagu. Just won her way to that ball. Bounced off of Estelle Johnson. Now Pickett. Pickett and Naren, two players new to Orlando Pride this season, along with Sydney LaRue. Ubogagu and Morgan trying to work together. Here's Naren. Obogagu slipped it through for Morgan. Got there just before the end line, but put it in the hands of Bledsoe. 
A nice little interplay, and it starts with a long ball that comes in there and able to settle it. Abogabu, quick one, two, sees the seam in the corridor, open for Morgan, who is bypassing Smith with her speed, timed her run so well because she held off her a little bit and then started the minute Abogabu got on the half turn. So a couple of pretty decent, we'll say, chances for both teams here through the first 10 minutes. That pass picked off by Kennedy, who's looking to catch Bledsoe off her lion. Oh, she does. The NWSL player of the week got caught on that one, Kate. She did. And Kennedy with her second goal. It comes off this little giveaway. Loman trying to hit a square ball right into the midfield. You see Kennedy pick her head up, realize Bledsoe is out of position, and then just rifles the shot. Bledsoe's not doing anything wrong. She's stepping up. She's looking to see thinking your team is going to expand, that expansive shape you take when you're attacking, maybe provide that support in behind if they need to do a, bypass, a back pass to relieve some pressure. But then she didn't backpedal quick enough. And also, the strike and the pace of that strike. It's too much for her to, to get back in time. Kennedy really earned that, stepping in and breaking up the passing of the spirit and then heads up play to look up and think, you know, I might give this one a try. With the World Cup going on, that obviously, you know, was reminiscent of Michael Bradley's hit from midfield and men's World Cup qualifier against Mexico. They had talked about that and prepared that. I just asked Tom Sermani right after that went in, did you guys talk about that at all? And he said, no, I didn't. But if anybody asked me, I'll say I did. It was not discussed. Just a real smart play, heads up by Kennedy to look up, see her off her line, and hit it just perfectly. I like the, the World Cup tie-in, even though there's a little bit of salt in the wound there, Dallin, talking about the U.S. Not getting a chance to see that team, of course on the world stage this time around. Loman intercepting this time for Washington. Looked like she had the same idea on the other end. Took a quick shot, had a block though. Ubogagu won it from Smith. Then Eggman and LaRue, two potential targets in the area. If she can get it there, got around Church. Morgan trailing the play. Andy Sullivan, number one overall pick. Reigning Herman Trophy winner out of Stanford. She won a national championship last year. Gets it over to Rebecca Quinn. Canadian international in her first year in the NWSL. Here's Huster. Found Didasco streaking down that sideline. LaRue right there with her. Yeah, LaRue really does a lot of defensive work, doesn't she, when she's out there for her team? She's probably the most aggressively pressing forward on the defensive side of the ball that exists in the league. Because she's so athletic as well in Pacey, and she's not afraid to go to ground. Kennedy, the goal scorer, had it for a moment. It looking for Ubogagu. This has been a very busy throughway this sideline. These first 13 minutes and change of this match for Orlando. Now that's just because Taylor Smith's starting position. She's in that back four, and you don't step up the 10 yards to your opponent who you're supposed to be marking unless you absolutely know she's getting the ball to your feet. Because you don't want to leave that space in behind. Because now your whole entire back line has to recover with you and stretches you back and stretches you field and opens up the gaps and spaces in front of you for their midfield to run into. And that's exactly what's happening. Smith isn't timing when to go and when not to go correctly. And part of that is because Obogaboo's speed. She's not used to facing someone that's just as fast, if not faster than her. I mean, across that front three for Orlando, so much speed. As Didasco took it away for a moment from LaRue. Deft touch from Naren to control that initially. 
Here's Van Eggmans. Little off the mark for Morgan. Poliana, 27-year-old Brazilian. Her first year with Orlando came over in the offseason from a trade with Houston. Van Eggman couldn't hang on to it. Washington just needing to escape this corner at the moment. Orlando making it difficult. Poliana. Out of the reach of Van Egmond. This is a heads up play by Alana Kennedy and you get to see the amount of power hits it with her laces and it's got a bit of backspin so although it's going high it will drop and you see Bledsoe I wonder if she just could have taken three or four more steps backwards before she put that hand up possibly not realizing where she is in relation to her own goal because I think she could have gotten it been a bit more patient and stepped back but heads up play from Alana Kennedy and I haven't seen a goal like that since probably Yael Averbush She's done that. That's on YouTube, actually. She did that in college, <laughs> off a kickoff. She's done that. But that's that little bit of international savvy that makes the whole entire league better. Carly Lloyd knocked a long one in yes. at the World Cup. Oh, that was 2015. An impressive game from her. Uh, the, indeed. Hat trick. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> big conversations as we continue this year in NWSL and of course into the offseason will be qualifying for next year's Women's World Cup in France. CONCACAF qualifying which involves the United States will take place in the fall. That will be here in the U.S. It'll be fun to follow that. See if the defending champs get the opportunity play on the world stage again. One would certainly think that would be the outcome, but you don't take anything for granted by any means. Nice move by LaRue, then look to be tugged down by Didasco. Imagine that we'll see a card, and we will. It's a nice little move from LaRue, who we've seen mostly in defense of this game, but she does the little quick touch. Didasco does the professional move, pulls her down, earns the yellow, but it allows her team to get behind the ball and get organized defensively. But it's a nice little bit of crafty work from LaRue. Watch her first and second touch. That's something after pregnancy, I think the lateral movement is the hardest thing to go. And when we were talking, she's like, you know, my body was not catching up to what my mind wanted to do. But right then and there, it looked like they were in sync. Carson Pickett crossing it, but nobody home for Orlando. Sydney LaRue really seems to be finding her form. Four goals off a couple of braces in the last three matches. Had obviously that year that she missed with the birth of her son Cassius and first year with Orlando. And in a stacked attack, making sure people don't forget the name of Sydney LaRue. Been playing really well lately. Still Johnson looking for Didasco. Poliana saw an opening, took it up there herself. Big switch over to Abogagu. Has Van Eggman overlapping on the outside, gets it to her. Here is Van Eggman. Orlando will reset. 
Eggman looking for that far post. Bledsoe had it covered. One assist for Van Eggman this season. No goals. Van Eggman coming all the way over. This came from an overlapping rim. The center to out to get outside of a Bogagu. Just missed the mark here. I think she's trying to shoot that. But it should have been across because she's too far out. But she didn't get enough pace on it. If she is trying to shoot that, to whip it around a little bit of the inside of the foot to put that curve on it. I think she was inspired from watching today's Germany game a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> To the death that one was. Here is Ortega getting all the way to the end line. Lohman just maybe a step behind. Poliana was there defensively. And the little bit of craftiness right there. Hatch put it on. And Ortega, that first touch just bypasses Pickett. Pickett, only way to catch up would be pull her down and get a foul. But that first touch is a world class touch. It will beat any single defender. Three goals. Yeah, sorry, Kate. Three goals on the season for Ortega. Washington has some numbers in this attack. Huster to a wide open Ashley Hatch in the area. She takes the shot and just skies it onto the hill. This is what happens when Washington actually wins the ball back after they've given it up. They win it off a poor clearance and Estelle Johnson able to bend a little bit of a floating ball in that just dies. Hooster lays it back and Hatch sets up her foot trying to get something around. Does that little separating touch but leaning back a little bit. I think Pickett and Naren closing in might have just kind of gotten her off her rhythm and distracted her a little bit instead of getting her chest over the ball. Our NWSL game of the week coming at you from just outside the nation's capital. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markraft, Dallin Cuff, our entire crew for the NWSL on ESPN presented by Lifetime. Washington Spirit trailing the Orlando Pride after a goal in the 11th minute. Heads up play by Alana Kennedy. Not too far inside of midfield getting it over the head of Aubrey Bledsoe. Ortega. Hungry to get on the ball again. And it'll be a deep throw in here for Washington. This Washington Spirit team held scoreless their last three matches. Now they've managed to salvage a couple of points by shutting out their opponent the last two. They're trying desperately to get some more umph into that attack. Quinn with the header back toward Didasco. Ordega coming over. Eventually does have it cleared out of bounds. Forcing the issue a bit though, Ortega. Yeah, the two are the Franny and Joe show, Ordega and Loman. I don't know if you caught that on social media. Those two paid a visit to our production truck yesterday. Morgan flipped up and over. An ooh and off from the crowd, but no whistle from our referee. Smith in her first year with the Spirit. There's Quinn. Just going to kick it out of bounds as Morgan's still down over there. And Washington's trying to build a little bit, but it was an errant ball, and Johnson comes stepping in, and Morgan's trying to win it back. The extra little long touch of that ball gets between both of them in a bit of a collision. Alex Morgan on her feet, which is a good sign. The crowd applauding that. And it's crucial for the Orlando Pride to keep her healthy. She missed a game or two with concussion protocol. 
after a challenge with the Utah goalkeeper. This is a player that is not only creating goals, but she's also creating space and options for others with her decoy runs. If they want to build any continuity, and they all talk about we need to find consistency in our performances week in and week out. They need all the key players together on a more consistent basis and not so many injuries, which they can't control, but that's, right. this is a key thing for them. And Morgan did miss the first meeting between these two teams. Two nothing win by the Spirit here on this field in week two. And not only does Orlando want to keep her healthy, you know, Jill Ellis and the U.S. national team anxious to keep Alex Morgan healthy as well. Leading scorer for the red, white, and blue in this calendar year with six goals for the U.S. She's up and running now. Naren wastes no time in getting it to her. Morgan shot, though, not on target. Like the ball. That's a beautiful ball, but I love the defending by Estelle Johnson. Watch her play as center back. She knows Morgan's on her back shoulder, so instead of going and challenging okay. for that ball, she lays off a little bit and is allowed to put enough pressure on her and make Morgan take that shot from distance. But to hit that on the half volley, she needs to slice it a little bit more, just a little bit of half slice in order to keep that ball lower and actually challenge Bledsoe. Quinn and Sullivan, everyone such high hopes of what those two might be able to do along with Mallory Pugh. Washington team this season. Talk about consistency. They've really had difficulty with that, especially with Pew being out. Everyone anxious to get her back. Lavelle, international call-ups. Right. Yeah, Rose Lavelle, Jim Gabera telling us, hadn't been able to train this week. They're being careful as she had some inflammation in that hamstring, and obviously that is an injury that kept her out for a long time as Hatch is on the move. She's just going to take the shot with her left foot. Harris, no problem. And you've got that weapon sitting on your bench if you're Orlando as well. The Brazilian international, a spark plug anytime she's on the field. Marta came off the bench in the last match for Orlando, made a huge difference as they got the win 3-2 over Sky Blue FC in a match that went down in the 83rd minute. Rachel Hill with the game winner off the bench for the Pride. Ordega. How huge would a goal be for Washington and their confidence? Lohman trying to slide in toward it. Spirit Squadron has a drum line going, but the heartbeat of that attack just fading out. Laura Dega picks her head up, realizes she's the one that's going to have to hit that restraining line, but Lohman is the only one else to join her as Hatch had, the center forward, had come all the way back. When I watch Washington attack, I don't see anyone pushing that back line down. Like, you'll watch Alex Morgan on the other side. She's always pushing that back line of the spirit back. She's on that restraining line. Hatch likes to come to that ball. Lohman needs to stay up a little bit higher. Showing Roosevelt to you there. Did have her first start in the last game, but... Dallin, unfortunately, she's back on the bench. Yeah, I was talking to her before the match today. She said, you know, first she was really frustrated when she pulled up and felt that pain in her hamstring last week. She, it really is just some scar tissue that came loose and caused some pain. She said, not a long-term injury, but short-term, but now she's relieved. At first really frustrated, now relieved that it's going to be a brief injury. She expects to be back soon. That's certainly good news, Dallin. Close range. Quinn taking the worst of that one. It seems no worse for the wear. Rebecca Quinn, number three overall pick in last year's draft. Played collegiately at Duke University, went to the College Cup. And also a member of the Canadian national team. Oleana. Shalina Zadorsky, another Canadian international on the field, this time for Orlando.
Joanna Lohman, great feature coming up on her at halftime. I want to make sure you stick around to watch the Ford halftime show. As LaRue and Morgan, maybe, yes, Morgan did get to it, but it goes to Bledsoe. Luru has the right idea. Now she shifted sides of the field as this Sorry. left side is being very successful in getting in those channels. You get to see Luru doing a little bit of a slot of ball. Watch Morgan's movement. Watching, watching, watching. Showing where she wants it. Love the non-verbal communication. Throwing Whitney Church off. Sits on her back shoulder. Just a little bit too much heat on that ball. Morgan isn't able to get her hips around it and get it cut back in. But I was wondering what the interchange and the flexibility of that front three is. Morgan likes to be that center pivot. We get to see LaRue over on this side and now Ubogagoo on the other. How successful LaRue's going to be over here? Yeah, I think you... Smith has had a lot to handle so far. What do you make of that change? Well, I think if you're over on this left-hand side, if you're LaRue, you get to be a bit more offensive because Didasco on the other side is going forward a ton. So being cognizant of that, whoever's that right winger is playing more defensive and not doing as much offensive work. Now you're right, Smith, we knew as a threat to get forward, did that so often with North Carolina last season, but in this match in particular, and more so this season, it's been Didasco who's been able to get up in the attack a bit more for Washington. Here is Ubogogu. Houston cut that attack off. Lohman. Shots even at four apiece between these two teams. The one goal to the Orlando Pride and Alana Kennedy in the 11th minute. That's the difference thus far. A win today could put Orlando into sole possession of second place behind North Carolina. Loman trying to turn and Poliana having none of it. And Poliana is shutting down everything going on down that side, whether it's a long ball to Didasco, who's trying to join the attack. She's always been in the right spot. Pickett looking for Nairn, who got in behind that back line of Washington. Nairn trying to lay it across, set up her teammates, but just a little bit in between the two runners she had. Now Houston on the counter for Washington. Houston, the only remaining Washington Spirit player from year one, been here the entire time. How about that connection though? Nair improving, she can be a threat to get behind as well. You're used to seeing the likes of Morgan and Ubogagu. And LaRue do it. Yeah, and here's the difference is that Nairn, that space was free. And even though she's a midfielder, she goes and she takes it. You don't see that happening on the other end. And that last play, Ordega came out. Hat should have come over to be that outlet up top a little bit wider. And she didn't. So that second run is proving crucial for the attacking success for Orlando. Yeah, we knew the midfield on the other side for Washington was going to be important in linking that attack and getting support to that attack. And... We really have not been able to see too much of that, have we, here so far? A lot of defending being done by those spirit midfielders. <laughs> Plenty of time for Zadorski to make up her mind what she wanted to do. Had her sights set on Morgan. Sullivan to Lohman. Now some good numbers in the midfielders in the mix for Washington. Here's Quinn. 
Sullivan just had it taken away. A little long on the ball, perhaps. Now back to Quinn. Ordega and LaRue. What a matchup that is. Now Smith gets into the attack. Gets the cross off. Hatch stuck a leg out, but didn't have too much hope on that ball. And this is what mobility can get you. It creates opportunities and opens up space. Here's Smith, a little bit of a dummy run that allowed Smith to get that ball, catching LaRue a little bit off guards and Hatch. Once again, the ball is a little bit behind her. And it's that offensive piece they have worked on the entire week. Coach Jim Guevara said, we didn't even talk about defense. We just practice, practice, practice on trying to build that chemistry up top. And part of that chemistry is knowing when to run and that timing of that run to get on the end of crosses. LaRue cuts it to the inside. Was looking for Van Eggman's church. Broke that up and then a big collision between LaRue and Sullivan. They both just went in hard for the ball. Well, LaRue and Sullivan, LaRue especially not happy that she's getting the call against her on this. I actually don't think that's LaRue's fault. I think they both are going in for a bouncing ball with their foot up, but no one is doing studs up. That would be a lot different. Just happens that LaRue gets a little bit more of Sullivan on the lower half of the body, but Sullivan gets LaRue all with the upper half. And the referee's angle, though, he awards it to Washington. Talk about insult to injury. Big hit for LaRue. She's down on the ground and then sees the ball going in possession of the opponent. Nonetheless, the Pride are back on it. And Estelle Johnson taking away any opportunity for Morgan to get onto the ball. Some pressure here from the Pride, trying not to let this spirit team build out the way they would like. Chance for Hatch, not the right ball. Ashley Hatch, NWSL Rookie of the Year last season with North Carolina, seven goals, tied for the most in NWSL history by a rookie. Has three goals, one assist this season for Washington. Now near and down. Naren always busy in that midfield, trying to look to set up other people. Didasco late to the challenge. Good call by the referee, had no ability to win that ball. Off the kick, headed down by LaRue Morgan, trying to get to it. And remember, Didasco already on a yellow. She's got to be careful. Second corner kick of the match coming for the Pride. Naren played it on the ground. First corner kick attempt of this match. See what she opts to do this time around. Her left footed ball, out swinger. Kennedy couldn't get to it for the second time. Gives it back to Washington. Difficult spot, however. Morgan. Van Eggman, one touches toward the corner, just wide. Every time Washington gives up the ball too is easily, Orlando is punishing them by quickly attacking the other end. The other Australian on the team, Van Eggman, once again on the score sheet as well, in a perfect position at the top of the box. Look at, no one is marking her. Hooster had come all the way over, losing that discipline to stay a bit more central. And I'm looking at Washington, I watch this midfield, I don't see a true number six. I don't see anyone holding, sitting in passing channels and winning tackles. They're chasing whoever they're... 
could be chasing here is that bounce just over the head of Morgan. Go ahead, Kate. But they're not putting pressure on the service. And then when the runner starts to take off, they just let them go. So then now they're not man marked when they get into the box. It's interesting how they're setting up. One of them needs either between Hooster and Rebecca Quinn. I bet it should be Hooster will be a little bit more robust in that defensive midfield role. Now sometimes can be difficult to define those roles when you have had different players switching in and out. Free kick opportunity now though for Washington. So we'll see what they can come up with here perhaps get something to challenge Ashlyn Harris. Good to see her get a start. One of those friendlies against China for the U.S. Church puts the ball into the box, but it bounces right to Harris. Morgan looking for Ubogagu. Johnson right there with her, touched it away, right to LaRue. Again, all the space in midfield to do what they want. Alex Morgan here trying to play Ubogagu in, tries to beat Estelle Johnson. Estelle Johnson gets a nick on it, goes straight back to LaRue, not able to get clean contact. And Smith able to get a deflection. Ledso smartly picks it up. And now Washington's trying to create something on the attack. Sullivan finally winning it for the Spirit. Got it to Hatch. So now, try to get her team into a better position. Quinn comes back. Church missed the last game against Seattle, excused absence. Quinn was in the back line, now back in the midfield. Hatch got pushed down, it looked like, but no call. Advantage. It was bouncing to Loman. It's an excellent through ball that ends up finding Hatch. And there is no intention by Monica to play the ball whatsoever. Instead, gets most of Hatch. And she's the one a bit more shaken up from yeah. it. Monica in her third year with Orlando. Did come in hard on that challenge. Morgan, with a sea of red around her, finds Zubogagu. Couple of runs coming from the midfield. We saw Naren get a pretty good opportunity off <laughs> one of those such runs earlier this half. If you'd only see my hand motions upside, up in the box, I'm like, watch them go, here they go. <laughs> so if you know your midfielder's gonna run past you, you gotta get a body in him. Or you just hit him, just to, put the run off by at least two seconds to give your defenders a chance to catch them or you can communicate but you don't hear that communication either i'm not hearing from who star quinn being like stell stell or church here comes one you don't hear that so they don't know what's coming as a former center back that's incredibly difficult to now have a solid back line i like to hear that defender and you come out or just hit them just do something oh you gotta do a little something <laughs> soccer is a contact sport <laughs> don't be afraid don't hurt anybody Dega just couldn't get down to it. Loman got a foot on it. Remember that.
that feature coming up on Joanna Lohman at halftime. It is Pride Month, and I'm not sure there is another player more prideful in this month and in being who she is, and you're going to get to see that in this feature very nicely done at halftime. of stoppage time added on to this first half. Smith was making a run. Sullivan couldn't get there. Looks the other side instead for Loman off her head. Popped up and into the gloves of Harris. Well, Loman inserted in the lineup. She's able to get on that restraint. She likes to dr drift a bit forward and there. Just the timing gets under it a little bit too much, but at that point gets inside of her defender, Pollyanna, and able to challenge Harris a little bit, who's been, hasn't been that busy this half. No, she's not. Thought Lohman was gonna give us the perfect lead in, find the equalizer there to her Part feature. <laughs> Didn't quite go as planned for Washington as they still trail Orlando 1-0. Coming up next, it is the Ford Halftime Show. Down will take a look at the extraordinary journey of Washington Spirit midfielder Joanna Lohman. Kate and I will review our first half. That's Ford. Go further. Our score at the end of the first 45 minutes, 1-0 in favor of the visiting Orlando Pride. see rainbow in the sky there over the Maryland Soccerplex, Maureen Hendricks Field, Boyd's Maryland, site of our game of the week on the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime as our second half kick is underway between the Washington Spirit and the Orlando Pride. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf up in the booth, Dallin Cuff down on the sideline. And the rest of our terrific ESPN Lifetime crew. Orlando out in front after that 11th minute goal from Alana Kennedy. That's the difference thus far. Naren looking for Ubogagu. She and LaRue have flip flop sides a couple of times in that front line for Orlando. Ubogagu got herself an opening, got the ball through, glanced away from Ben Egmont. Morgan back to Poliana. She'll now send it toward Van Eggman. LaRue, offside flag goes up. That'll give us a chance to check in with Dallin, who talked to both coaches. Dallin. Yeah, Jen, we'll start with Jim Gabara from Washington Spirit. Coach saying that they want to be more aggressive, especially in the offensive end, be more aggressive and play with a better tempo. We thought they just took too many touches on the ball, more one-two touch, better tempo he wants to see in the second half. And from Tom Sermani, he really liked their first half performance, thought they got in great positions to score, but their decision-making in the final third was not great. He thinks they should have had at least one or two more goals. He had a better decision-making in the final third. Thank you, Dallin. Chance to see if Washington can indeed be aggressive. They have it taken away. I think you probably agree with those coaches' assessments, Kate, some of what we talked about with Washington taking advantage of opportunities, getting numbers, and Orlando did have a lot of chances, only one goal to show for it. Yeah, I think if they do play quicker, one and two touch for Washington, that will help them. But also just better angles of support, lap, cut out the square balls. Shot from Ortega off target. So this is the question of whether or not LaRue on that last attempt was offside, and she was not. It is from the moment that ball is kicked and something that can part
part of a body that can be used to score a goal. And in that point, LaRue is not offside. And the sideline referee, the AR, just didn't get that one right. But that was a great picture of the back line of Washington. They are not a straight line. There are little zigzags here and there that allow this forwards from the Orlando Pride to sit in those pockets and be in dangerous positions without being offside. This Washington team, if it hopes to move up the table, has got to find a way to get some offense going. Lohman, three days shy of her birthday, gets it over to Houston. Bogagoo coming back to play some defense. You've seen that from the Orlando front line, whether it be Obogagoo or LaRue back there defending as well as doing a lot of work on the offensive end. Zadorski to Nairn knows exactly where she wants to go and it's toward Alex Morgan. Van Eggman presenting herself as an option. Morgan looking a little further across the field. Poliana blocking the path of the ball toward Ordega. Now watch the difference the minute that Orlando wins the ball. It is that one-time through ball to Nairn. Nairn picks her head up, puts a textured ball into Morgan. Perhaps a chance here, Kate, for Washington. Hatch, still with it on her foot, takes a shot toward the far post. Shot or across, had some good intention on that ball. And we're going end to end now, which is exciting to see if you're a Washington fan. You see Hatch on the half turn, able to quickly turn and spin Pollyanna and able to get something across. You can see the power at which she hits that too. Deep throw. Smith will come over to take. That one right off the face of Alana Kennedy as she stays down. And our referee Eric Tattersall will come over to take a look. A challenge between the two of them. Hatch trying to get involved, Kennedy just grabs her face instantaneously, unintentional, but still smarts nonetheless. <laughs> well, big news for this Washington Spirit team. It has been announced that their match against the Portland Thorns at the brand new Audi Field in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, August 25th. Kickoff for that is going to be 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, and we're going to be there. We'll have it for you as part of the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime on ESPN News. Cannot wait to see that facility. Expected to open July 14th. Capacity just over 20,000. The first time ever, the Spirit will have a home game played away from the Maryland Soccerplex. Audi Field will be the new home for DC United, replacing RFK Stadium. I know DC United fans excited for their new digs. And we're excited to be there as well. Should be a great venue for that NWSL matchup. Smith on the run for the Spirit now. Had a quick touch. Didn't work out. One runner for Orlando, it's Ubogagu. And Didasco plays it back. Hey. 
Estelle Johnson. Ortega. Franny Ortega had a couple of flashes in the first half. Never really got to get unleashed into the attack. You get to see that quick, explosive pace she has, not only over the 10, 20 yards, but in those little five-yard gaps that she's able to put herself into to bypass the defender. Just about service, though. Who's going to feed her? Good feed, potentially, for LaRue, taken away by the offside flag. And the midfield from Washington has improved from the first half to the second, which is why they have more possession. But the attacks from Orlando have become a bit more predictable. It does seem to be a little bit of more purpose to what Washington is doing, but also doing with pace in this second half, at least to start things off. Understanding that they are the team with their backs against the wall. Yes, we're just about at the midway point of the NWSL season, but they have some room to go on this table. And you cannot lament who's not there. You just have to work as Nairn will run for this ball. Bledsoe on her toes off her line. See, and that all happens because Washington had gone forward because they won the ball, but they gave it up right away. And they're exposed. And the counter press by Orlando is what has made them so dangerous all game long. That's one thing Tom Sermani told us this week, that he felt that was an area of vulnerability, right, for this Washington team. Free kick now coming for the Pride. Has not been an overly physical match so far. Just seven total fouls conceded. But what do you look for from Nairn here? We're going to look for your two giants. More than two. Kennedy, Van Eggman, LaRue. Over the head of Kennedy. LaRue was lurking beyond the play. Couldn't quite get the ball back to her. But in turn of, turn of aerial dominance, Orlando has got him. I'd say that, along with Portland, might be the two best office set pieces in the air with targets that can get quality heads on the ball. North Carolina, too, maybe yes. in that group? Jess McDonald, 45-inch vertical, I think she might have. That's <laughs> pretty big. Huster for Sullivan. And Andy Sullivan getting into the attack. We did not see that at all in the first half. No, but she's... You, but she's still dictating play. You see her asking for the ball. She's directing where she wants people to go with her non verbal communication. That one, the ball's going away from her, so she's Sullivan. not able to get something onto it. And she's a player who's had a couple of golden opportunities the last couple matches. Both 0-0 draws at New Jersey and against Seattle for Sullivan. And she missed a penalty kick against New Jersey and then had a sitter in stoppage time of the last match against Seattle. So she's had some opportunities. And Joanna Lohman will hear it from the crowd as she comes off and Maggie Doherty Howard comes on. Two very different type of players here as Lohman we've talked about, such a fan favorite. Waves to her crowd. And Doherty Howard onto the field. See if she can make a difference in that midfield for Washington. Ubogagu. Quick trigger. Sullivan trying to flick it forward for Doherty Howard. Dancing along that sideline. And a player down, so Washington's going to play it out of bounds. That's Quinn down in the back for the Spirit. And Quinn is playing almost in that defensive midfield role. She comes over to stop Uboga, who had traveled across the field. Looks like she gets her foot stepped on. 
not intentionally, but if you're a Washington fan, you're happy to see her get up because they have just been riddled with injuries in, with so many of their key players. Pew's on the bench. Lavelle's on the bench. And that group, part of this young, promising core of players, the Spirit Club is really hoping to build upon. Naren always looking up for options. Enjoyed our conversation with Ashlyn Harris this week and you were asking her about getting that back line organized. Has a couple of Brazilians <laughs> back there and what did she say? She said, I don't know if they understand, but they nod a lot. Yeah, or they're going to pull a step over on my six-yard box, and I just have to go with it, you know? It's, <laughs> it's how they play the game, and it's not wrong, and my way is not right. And I really like that perspective. Here goes Orlando again, always looking quickly once they take over possession. Bogagu does well to get out of danger. But speaking of danger, Morgan, I think she might have a chance to run on to that one. Again, they win the ball and they attack those seams and they hold on to the ball right after they win it. Smith trying to provide an option for Huster. I like that Sullivan's taking a more aggressive role, almost playing in that number 10 spot playing that attacking center mid. She's a bit more mobile in this part. She's trying to find those gaps, reading off a church and everyone else, where that service is going to go and can she get on that and be that second run that they were lacking in the first half. Jim Gabera challenging his team at halftime to be more aggressive, quicker with the touches. their way into this attack and into this match. At the very least, they've done a better job of making Orlando a bit more uncomfortable in this second half. Morgan has near and making a run in the middle. Johnson and Morgan, Estelle Johnson goes to ground. That is a well-timed tackle from the veteran. Morgan, one or two touches, trying to get a handle on it. And she's trying to do that long separating touch and just wait until she left, the ball left her foot, and Johnson goes to ground and clears it. You have to be sure if you go down as a defender, right? And it seemed as though Johnson was. Got the clearance that she wanted. Well, especially if you know you can't keep up with the pace-wise and you can't drop your shoulder and get a body into him. It's your last option. Ubogagu. Poliana. Sends it across the goal! An unintentional touch from Smith. Allows Bledsoe to pick it up. Quinn, though, immediately under pressure from Kennedy. Back heel from Kennedy is... ...taken away by Doherty Howard. Now can Washington go? Hatch holds it up. Looking for support. Bogu getting the defender to commit, bounces it out wide. And Smith thankfully did not get that much power. Or behind that touch, otherwise that might have challenged Bledsoe. And Abogu comes out for Rachel Hill. A little bit of insertion of energy, but I have to say Abogu has been extremely dangerous this half.
just talking to Rachel Hill before the match, she's excited about this role she has, kind of a super sub. She's been this now eight times she's been subbed on this season. She's only played about a third of the minutes for this team, but she's tied for the team lead with four goals. She loves her role. She comes in. She feels ready, full energy to make a difference. And obviously playing with people like Alex Morgan, she always works in training afterwards to find a finish like Morgan and works on the, her ball skills like Marta. She had one day wants to be able to do that, but no, she's got a ways to go. She has been a great spark off the bench for this Orlando team this season. Three goals off the bench for Rachel Hill. Three of her four coming when she started the match as a sub. And those all coming in the 80th minute or later, including the game winner in the last game against Sky Blue FC in the 83rd minute. Well, her relentless running and her pace puts an incredible amount of pressure on some tired defensive legs. And Tom Sermani in a bit of a pickle, as he might say, with Hill such a great option, but he told us Ubogugu obviously has done a lot of great things as well, and he's kind of settled into this well. Ubogugu seems to start the game well, and Hill's been fantastic coming in off the bench. And there's a certain mindset if you know you're coming off the bench and that is your key role. And the question is whether or not Ubogu would have that same mindset to be that positive spark when you don't get the nod from the coach to be a part of that starting 11. And Rachel Hill has embraced that role. Reminds me of old Shannon McMillan. Hmm. See if she makes a difference in this match. Orlando just with the one goal lead from Kennedy in that first half. Morgan gets around Church, near and again, trucking up the middle. Hill comes up in support as well. Morgan just couldn't get it to her. Not an easy ball for Harris, but she handles it. The Orlando Pride looking to get even for a loss here in Boyd's Maryland earlier this season. The Washington Spirit winning that matchup 2-0 in week two. But now it is the Pride with the lead as we are in the second half. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, Dallin Cuff, our entire crew. Happy to bring you this one. Happy to have you along with us. Enjoying this cooler temperature and the evening kickoff as well. Hill closed quickly by Doherty Howard after the turnover. Trying to get around, Poliana. Quinn, carrying it forward with LaRue in pursuit. Houston, Doherty Howard to the outside. Smith, the shot, just a bit high. And the Washington midfield continues to grow in this second half and having now an offensive impact on the game. Quick ball by Hooster. Well done by Maggie Dory Howard. Get involved. Layoff to Smith. Just, I think it's her plant foot, just a little bit too far away from her. The ball, which causes it to sail a little bit higher than it should, but there's barely any spin on it. Incredible amount of pace, but well interplayed. A little bit of give and go in the midfield allows space to open up wide as Orlando players start to converge in to sh shut down the ball. Excellent speed of play from Washington there. Some of their best stuff in this match. And next Saturday, June 30th, the NWSL returns to lifetime as we head down south to Orlando City Stadium as U.S. national team superstar Alex Morgan and this Orlando Pride team host McCall Zerboni in the first place North Carolina Courage who have not lost on the road this season. Again, coverage begins next Saturday. Get ready. It's going to be hot. 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, 12.30 Pacific. 
live on Lifetime. That promises to be a very interesting match as well. North Carolina has played so well all season long. They are dealing with a couple of injuries at the moment. No Abby Dahlkemper, no Sam Mewis for the courage in their win today. Naren, curling ball! The pride got ahead on it, but the flag would have negated that opportunity anyway. And a nice little textured ball again, trying to find Pollyanna, but started to run a bit too early. Washington has a good job of holding that line and not dropping until the last possible second. Eggman finally gaining control of the ball for Orlando. LaRue having to fight off the spirit. And now it'll be a free kick for Orlando. Pickett's gonna let Poliana send this ball into dangerous territory. But in the end, not too difficult of a grab for Bledsoe. Hill has great speed. Church breaking it up. And Kennedy fought her way to get to the ball. Houston, a chance to go for Washington on the right ball. Could this be it? Ordega has the wheels. Harris readies herself. Ordega near post. Side netting. We talked about when Washington wins the ball, can they then hold on to it and build right out of it? And Hooster does that exactly. A low driven ball in between the seam. And Ordega gets a bit selfish and decides to go for that near, near post shot. Picking her head up and realizing that Ashlyn Harris, the goalkeeper pride, has it all covered. Could she have cut that back to, wit to the on-rushing attacker? But if you're Orlando, you're pretty excited about this sub. I, I think there were even some fans here. I mean, there are fans for the player about to come in all over the world. Number 10, Marta, comes into the match for Orlando. Let's see how she changes the pace of things because in talking about Ashlyn Harris and Tom Sermani this week, and I know you talked to some players before the match as well. Such a huge difference that Marta makes when she's on the field. Well, individually, her skill on the ball, she solves problems. But she doesn't make a bad decision, according to her coach. And it's one of those cases where she's involved, that combination up top, they provide a threat bigger than themselves just because of her insertion. Marta did not train much this week, but obviously can make a difference here as she gets in much as she did in the last match against Sky Blue FC. But Washington's had some promising moments too. Axe trying to force one there. Harris maybe getting a little too bold. Mordega couldn't make her pay for it. Morgan wanting to send Hill. Sullivan got it back for Washington. Doherty Howard, Ordega, just outside the area. Long angle for Doherty Howard to capitalize on initially. Smith, staying with it. Naren. Not cleared yet. The shot from Quinn is blocked. Naren has done a ton of work on both ends of the field tonight for Orlando. And as dangerous as this Orlando attack can be, we haven't seen a lot of great things from them, especially in the second half. Well, I think it's because Washington figured out that midfield. They were getting 
beat in the first half, and Orlando was having so much success going forward because that midfield was controlling the tempo, deciding when to go, winning the ball, and connecting the pieces together. They slowed down a little bit, and Washington has picked up the pace of how they play, but also their movement and a bit more physicality in every single one of their challenges. Huster, great ball, an opportunity. Would have been a tough angle for Sullivan to work with. And Sullivan isn't just playing to get this team level. She's trying to earn her spot back with the national team. She's been called in a couple times, left out of the last camp. She's been asked to be a more aggressive front runner from that midfield spot, get in those spaces. When the forwards leave them, and you see what she's trying to do, that was a tough angle. Just need to get a little bit of a slice underneath it on any of those bouncing balls. Church. Hill. Pushes that ball out in front of her. Has fresh legs off the bench, as does Marta. Her first real involvement in this match. Doesn't see anything she likes initially. Plays with it just enough to get it to Hill. But offside. So maybe played with it a bit too much as Orlando got offside on that sequence. Music City takes center stage for a clash of USL Eastern Conference Titans, Nashville SC, and goalkeeper of the year candidate Matt Pickens host Justin Braun, and the resurgent Indy 11. Mike Watts and Devin Kerr will be on the call for the USL Game of the Week this Tuesday, June 26th. That's 8.30 Eastern on ESPN News. Fifteen minutes remaining in this one to see if Washington can make a dent in that scoreboard, something they have not been able to do the last three matches. 0-1-2 oh, over that stretch. trying to get around Zdorsky. Here comes Sullivan. Has Hatch breaking to the outside. She'll use Didasco. Didasco takes the shot. Not the result Washington was hoping for in that opportunity. Washington has been the more dominant team in the series historically against Orlando. Just one loss in the previous six meetings, including that win on March 31st, two to nothing. And by the way, the goals in that match did not come for Washington until the 80th minute. Mallory Pugh breaking through and then Ashley Hatch in the 88th, two nothing the final. A lot of the international players away, as well as Alex Morgan, though, for Orlando in that one. Christine Nairn getting set to come off. Tony Presley ready to come in. What did you make of Nairn's night, Kate? I thought Nairn was excellent coming in from a deep position in her runs. And the timing of those runs were perfect when she knew the service was coming in, as well as the texture that she places on balls. Her impact in the second half, like most of the midfield, has struggled, which is why Marta you see on the field. And now you're going to put Presley in, who likes to sit in front of that back four, will be a little bit more of a shield because Andy Sullivan is starting to get on a lot more of those second balls and creating from a higher position. Marta somehow got it through the first defender. LaRue curling around to come back to the ball. Finds Marta. Five-time FIFA World Player of the Year. It's it across, but taken away. She'll get it back, or not, and shows her frustration. High level.
level of expectation both for herself and for her teammates, Marta. And some frustration perhaps bubbling over into that foul. Not much to be done with that ball from Quinn. Two very different storylines for these two teams coming into this match tonight. Orlando's been on a high, just one loss in their last nine matches. Washington, on the other hand, five losses in their last nine. We're going to have plenty of opportunities to see this Orlando Pride team over the next few weeks. Made a great Great run last season in the second half of the season as Marta and Alex Morgan really started to find their connection. And this team unbeaten over the last two seasons when either Marta or Alex Morgan score. Well, I'm excited for the Washington Spirit team when Pew comes back and Lavelle. Yeah. Can you just imagine that attacking core? Question is, can they stay within striking distance of that top four until that time? Ordega, her shot is wide. Let's catch up on last night's match between Portland and Houston. Tobin Heath, great to see her in the starting 11 for the Thorns, and she scored early. That was the ninth minute, and then Sofia Huerta. Well, hello, welcome to Houston. She had a goal in the 12th, Anna Cernogorcevic. Got that header just barely into the goal and then just topping things off. Christine Sinclair, her 100th NWSL appearance, scored her seventh goal of the season. She leads all scorers in the NWSL this season. Portland getting the victory 3-1 to one on the road. Marta. Quinn. Numbers creeping forward for Washington. Hatch couldn't keep it in. Hatch had just been starting to find her scoring stride prior to this three-game stretch without a goal, without a win for the Spirit. Doherty Howard. Zadorski taps it out. Quick throw taken by the Spirit. To the 82nd minute now we go. If this result holds, you'd think Orlando certainly pleased to be able to pick up three points, but perhaps not as pleased overall with their performance tonight. It was really, I'm not gonna say a fluke goal because I'm gonna credit Alana Kennedy heads up play but a deep shot. I mean, it certainly wasn't one of those that you would rely upon or try to set up very often as she took as she took the ball. All the way in the midfield and chip blood, so. No, it didn't come from a pattern of play, right? right? Where they're trying to expose the weaknesses and the vulnerabilities in this Washington team. If you're watching, if the score stands, you gotta be happy with how you bounce back performance-wise in the second half. And then they'd be a bit more dangerous in the final third. Go, 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 go. 
Another change coming. Tiffany Weimer will make just her second appearance of the season. Her first year back with Washington. Had quite a journey. Was drafted by Washington in the dispersal draft. Traded to Houston. Released and then signed off waivers. Again to come back to the spirit. 34-year-old former Penn State Nittany Lion. Very crafty on the ball. Can hold it under pressure, but that'll move Dory Howard back into the middle where Quinn was, and she'll go out wide. Didasco will hustle up to take the throw. Church gets it over to Weimer. Dirty Howard. Saw Hatch. Now Didasco. She'll take the shot. Harris has to lay out to keep it out of the back of the net. Didasco with a bit of confidence. The first time she tried this, she missed, but this one she puts it back under her preferred foot. It'll be a little bit of curve on it. LaRue not able to close down. But look at Harris, full extension, not guessing where it's going to go. Strong wrist, not able to hold on to it, but not giving up a dangerous rebound back in the center either. I don't know how that wasn't a corner kick. It was based when it went back out. Was there another off. touch? There was another touch. <laughs> I just saw the same. And was, so what were, did I miss? You were spellbound. I was. Thank you for that. Tom Sermani. A little direction to his team. Trying to see this one out. Hang on for the three points on the road. Sullivan wanting to go. Just quickly on the bench here, Tom Samani trying to change the shape of the team. Once them in a 4-4-1-1. Morgan and Marta up top. He's trying to get Rachel Hill and Sidney Rue to kind of tuck in more as, as midfielders. Trying to create and relay the message across the field. I'm not sure it's got to Rachel yet. Allen. Because they're trying to prevent that ball right there, that little seam ball to wire. Because they're having success creating in front of the back line of Orlando and then dumping it out wide looking for service or at least buying enough time to get more numbers forward, which created that Didasco shot on the last one. So defensive play trying to seal the victory in the waiting moments of the game. Washington's getting ready for a three-game road trip coming up after this match. They'll go to Chicago, to Orlando, so they'll see this Pride team again very soon. And then at North Carolina. Have not been able to take advantage of being at home, though, this time around, at least not yet. Poliana's ball headed out of bounds. Copy. Here is Hill. Too far for Marta. Pride, by the way, will be at home for their 
next three matches, Houston, North Carolina, and Washington in that trio of matches. As we mentioned, we will be there next Saturday. Morgan challenging Johnson, fending her off. Morgan back to it, Marta, offside. Want to remind you, tickets to the 2018 NWSL Championship game are currently on sale. That game will be played at Providence Park in Portland, Oregon on Saturday, September 22nd at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, and will be broadcast live on Lifetime. For more information, log on to nwslsoccer.com. Get your tickets, tune in. Should be an exciting match as always when you're playing for a championship. Thorns trying to fight for a chance to be playing on their home field. Pick up their win as we told you last night at Houston. That improved them to 19 points on the season, tying them for second place at the moment with Seattle and this Orlando Pride team. Orlando would break that deadlock if they can get the three points on the road here tonight. Presley. LaRue to Poliana. To play a bit of keep away here if you're Orlando. Finally, the Spirit do take possession, but not for long. Marsha coming to get it. Offside on Morgan. She points immediately to Estelle Johnson. Thought she had stayed in an onside position. Sullivan may be thinking Smith was a little closer than she was that time. And so, Kate, I mean, how much do you think of maybe some of the disjointedness or lack of execution in that final third for Orlando is due to the fact that they didn't have Marta in this match from the beginning? I think it's more just about that consistency that they're looking for. In that first half, it was the angles of which when they took the shot weren't great angles, right? A lot of those through balls here, they were overhit and they weren't able to get across or they were just a little bit too far wide where they weren't able to get a shot on goal. But that midfield did exactly what Coach Tom Sermani wanted, was to boss that midfield, control the tempo, set play, and they did that. But they didn't make adjustments in the second half when Washington realized they A, they were playing too slow, did not have enough of a physical presence, and were too spread out in that midfield, and they started to take over. So it was fun to watch Washington adapt, and you can see bits and pieces, but both teams are seeking that continuity of consistency for longer stretches of time but I thought Orlando had it for 45 and I think in bits and pieces Washington's starting to figure it out certainly an improved performance by the spirit in the second half most would agree just nothing to show for it on the scoreboard Marta and Houston getting into it a little bit but just even that right there Hooster was close enough to actually put pressure on it we didn't see her strip anyone of a ball in the first half Presley brought down nicely by LaRue. Sydney LaRue, why not? Take a chance. Get in the area. No foul called, though. Maybe Presley was just trying to send it to the corner to take some time off the clock. But LaRue, the way she brought that ball down, gave herself a nice angle to work with. 
and totally, totally just beat Didasco, able to get something on it. And then she gets selfish, as she should, and then Marta's like, it's okay, I would do the same thing, just unable to get the shot off with a bit of a heavy touch. You can see her explosiveness. Offside. But then an awkward restart for Washington. Four minutes of stoppage time that we're already into here. About halfway through. here for Washington. This league no stranger to late drama. Last week, North Carolina Courage suffered their first loss of the season. Utah Royals FC had a goal in stoppage time. That challenge is going to be a yellow card for Doherty Howard as Morgan took the worst of it. Last minute, Dirty Howard coming in hard and poorly timed. Trying to get something on it, a little bit of a leg, but it's more her angle at which she does it, right? She loses the ball, now she's lunging for it. Had to go right through Morgan to get to it. And Alex Morgan, such an important piece. You mentioned it earlier both for this Orlando Pride team and the U.S. Women's National Team. Not going to be happy with that challenge from Doherty Howard. I think Alex Morgan's probably ready for this one to be over. She's had a couple of collisions that have left her walking gingerly. She plays hard. That's, you know, there's a lot of forwards out there that don't want to get into physical challenges, and that's not, she's not one of them, which makes her so dangerous. You just hope those physical challenges actually come a little bit higher up the field, where if she does get on the ball, then she'll put something away and not in a tackle like that. When she's doing the right thing to lunge in, Doherty Howard took a long touch and just was a last ditch slide tackle that got too much of the player. But that's also what makes her so good. Sullivan trying desperately to get to that ball. And Presley's just gonna send it down to the other end of the field and say, come on referee, blow that whistle. Extra time added on due to the Morgan injury beyond our four minutes. But we should be hearing that whistle shortly. Orlando on a three-match unbeaten streak coming into this one, looking to extend it to four. Is there a last chance here for Washington? Not this time. And there is the whistle. The Orlando Pride, a one-nothing shutout victory over the Washington Spirit. And that puts them in sole possession of second place behind North Carolina. But the Spirit improved as the game went on. And a great save by Ashlyn Harris, leaving her feet on the Didasco shot from distance. Keeps this thing with a win in the score sheet for them. Ashlyn Harris picking up the shutout. And despite all those attacking options for Orlando, it was Alana Kennedy, her second goal of the season that was the difference. She's with Dallin. Thanks, Jen Alana. Congratulations. Uh, unbelievable goal. Have you ever scored a goal like that in professional level before? Um... <laughs> In training, but no, it hasn't come up on the, on the field, so um, I was happy to get a goal. Now, you guys are 4-2 and two in your last six road games. You've only lost one game in your last ten now. Why have you been so good, particularly on the road, though? Um, I don't have an exact answer for it. I think um, it's just game to game, and we, we knew we had to win here today, and um, we had a great attitude going to the game, and I thought we could have even had a few more goals, but happy that we were able to see the game out and get a, a clean sheet. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Thanks to Alana Kennedy's goal, Orlando now unbeaten in their last six road matches. We'll be back with more to wrap things up after this. I told her who's got two thumbs and saved hundreds with Geico. This guy. You sound like a Geico commercial. This is a Geico commercial.